What is going on, gunfighters? Welcome to Gunfighter Life, the podcast where we talk about guns, gunfighting, tactics, ballistics. Sometimes just some fun episodes on gun chat, which is more akin to what today's episode is going to be. Identity confused guns. That's what we're going to talk about today. A lighthearted, fun main topic on today's show. With that, the bio and then the main topic. I'll roll into a quick abbreviated bio and then into the main topic. First and foremost, I'm a Christian. I don't apologize for that. God is number one in my life. I grew up hunting and fishing in the backwoods of the southeastern United States at a very early age. Some of my earliest memories are with firearms. I joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. By God's grace, he got me through that safely. After that, I served as a instructor, an urban warfare instructor and a desert warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps. I also served with the LAPD both full-time as a sworn police officer and in some more specialized assignments, as well as serving in the U.S. Army full-time and part-time National Guard. I've been a FBI firearms instructor, still am an FBI firearms instructor, have been for a lot of years, also NRA certified and some other three-letter government agency certified. I have been in the past a private contractor for the federal government, advanced weapons instructor, and am currently a private security contractor working in conjunction with several three-letter government agencies. I've been the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area. By God's grace, he got me through all that in one piece, not because I'm better, but because he chose to have grace and mercy on me. I've been a professional hunter and guide. Professionally hunted things like buffalo and elk. Not many people today can say they've done that, but I'm blessed to be able to say that I have. I've hunted everything from white-tailed deer on the east coast to mule deer on the west coast to gray squirrel on the east coast to prairie dog on the west coast and elk and bear and wolf and slain all manner of beast. A state rifle and pistol champion a few times over in a few different disciplines. Now those experiences... It's not because I'm bigger or badder. Certainly not bigger. In fact, I met one of the patrons in real life. and uh, He said something to the effect of, I thought you'd be bigger. Reminded me of that William Wallace movie. Where he's like, oh yeah, if William Wallace were here, he'd shoot lightning bolts out of his rear end. Well, I'm not William Wallace. But I am the person that did all those things in the bio. But not because I'm bigger or badder. I don't think that I survived when many other young good men did not i give all the glory and all the credit to god all the talents and experiences that he's given me and the things he's let me live through i hope to use them to glorify god and to help you today so i so if i boast in anything it's not in my strength it's in that god had mercy on me and saved me because he had a purpose for me and hopefully i can use those talent skills and abilities to serve you today so Today in our culture and society, there's this whole mental illness of gender dysphoria. If you came here for political correctness, you probably should listen to something else. You get plenty of that garbage on mainstream media. Some things in life you don't get to change, boys and girls, men and women. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You don't get to pick. God doesn't make mistakes. You're better off dealing with the truth, stepping into the light, and living in the truth than walking in darkness and trying to live a lie. You're never going to be another gender. You are what you are. Embrace it. That's a real serious topic. A more lighthearted topic is identity-confused guns and ammunition. That's what we're going to talk about today. Like, what does this thing think that it is? Like, what is it? what's going on here? You know, shake my head. Scratch my head. What? What is this abomination of a gun or cartridge or whatever now let me be clear i generally view guns from a utilitarian standpoint i've come to realize and appreciate that many other people enjoy guns from many other things some people just like fine craftsmanship on finely engraved guns guns is art that's a real thing some people just like to collect guns i got a guy that i work with 
he doesn't do the same thing that I do, but he works for one of the government things like I do or in a different aspect. And he collects guns, not even an avid shooter. He collects guns from video games that he likes. Okay, you're an American. You want to spend your you know, disposable income on something. You want to get a bunch of guns from video games that you like. That's cool. Some guys just like to go to indoor ranges and shoot paper targets at seven feet away with the most obnoxious things they can find. A Desert Eagle or a 4570 lever gun or something. Shooting paper at seven yards. Okay, if that's you, more power to you, man. Uh, that's not me. But that All that to say is that you don't have to agree with me. I'm not even saying that these are bad guns. I'm saying they're identity-confused guns. Let's start off with the lever-action hog leg. If you don't know, this is like an Obrez over-circumcised version of of a lever gun where you cut the stock off and you cut the barrel off and you have this quasi is it a handgun is it some emergency hack job is it a rifle that didn't grow up like what what is this thing impractical to shoot you know i don't care how cool it was on some tv show or whatever that doesn't make it true like Either get a handgun or get a rifle that you can shoulder and fire as a shoulder-fired weapon. Uh, wh what is what is this hog leg thing? It looks cool. Okay. It looks cool. That's about all it has going for it. Again, and if that's what you're into, you know, esoteric, weird, oddball guns, that's totally a thing. Some people are totally into that. This checks that box. At least get it in 22 so you don't, you know, damage yourself. Trying to run like a hog leg 4570. But uh, anyway, yeah. Those things. I don't know what's going on with them, but they need to make up their mind. Rifle or handgun. The other one is a whole genre of cartridges. Now, I understand why they exist. It makes me a little sad why they exist. But the whole new straight wall fad. Um, like, you're going to take modern gun technology and come out with a new cartridge that goes back to 1870s level gun technology and i get that some states mandate they don't trust you to hunt with a real gun they don't trust you to hunt not that it's not a real gun i'll certainly kill somebody they don't trust you to hunt with a, a you know 120 year old technology you got to predate that and go with a straight walled cartridge and let's go with this primitive cartridge technology and put it in ar-15 because that makes sense somehow and some alternate reality where nothing makes sense in his opposite day they trust you to hunt with an ar-15 but they don't hunt, trust you to hunt with a bottleneck cartridge this is this is what we're dealing with here like you go hunt with a lever action and 360 buck hammer a lever action and 360 buck hammer but you can't hunt with the lever action in 30 30 because okay explain that one to me logically not litigiously the same thing a 350 legend and an ar-15 why does that exist what is going on here is it a modern gun is it an ancient relic make up your mind like either trust people to hunt with a rifle or don't I, it is what it is there's so many deer in the midwest they're getting cwd and spreading lyme disease and all that stuff but yet you don't want to roll back to 1870s technology i it is what it is i'm glad i don't live there How about the Henry Homesteader? What is this abomination? You get a 9mm carbine that's supposed to look like an old cowboy gun that weighs a ton. That it's, it's not old. It's not old school. But it's got wood on it. And it weighs as much as an M4. But it's a, it shoots a 9mm. And it's supposed to be old school. But it takes new mags. Like detachable modern pistol magazines. No thanks. <laughs> I don't know what that thing's trying to be. I don't know what market it's appealing to. Uh, apparently, it's still a thing, so somebody's buying it. You'll know that I'm a big fan of the shotgun. You'll also know that I'm a big fan of ARs and AKs, if you listen to this regularly. Not my favorite guns, but like they work. They're the battlefield standard of today. And I love shotguns for their utilitarianism, for their, you know multifaceted nature for their flexibility 
but let them be what they are. What is this AR, AK-47 shotgun thing? Stop it with that. Stop it with that. Unless you are competing in three-gun and you're in open division, which is the only case I can think of for like a Sega 12, just get a real good shotgun with proven technology that's reliable, that's been around for a long time, if it's a practical gun. And again, I, get, I know people don't get guns because they're practical. Maybe, you, maybe you're like, you know what I want? You know what's going to fulfill me in life? Or you know what's just going to be a good use of the money that I have? Is this giant abomination AR-15 that takes 12 gauge. <laughs> that doesn't point like a shotgun. And doesn't have the capacity of an AR-15. Doesn't have the range of an AR-15. Is not going to be lightweight like an AR-15. But it looks like an AR-15, but it's a shotgun. Yes. Take my money. Maybe if that's you, cool. But... What is this thing supposed to be? Pick one. Pick an AR-15, a good one, or pick a shotgun, a good one. This thing is neither one. Or the AK variants thereof, right? The Sega 12 is not a bad gun, but I would never take that in a tactical scenario over a good 590 or a good 870 Wingmaster, Police Magnum, or Benelli M2, Benelli M4. No, I just, I just wouldn't. So, yeah, they're kind of identity-confused guns in my opinion. I don't even want to name the company that came out with this thing, but I guess they did it to themselves. This lever action AR-15 abomination. It's like the front half, it looks like you took a spot weld and cut off the front half of an AR-15 and the back half of a lever gun and pop welded them together. Why? What? What What are we doing here, guys? And I get there are people that have been so infringed they can't even have... 1950s technology because you got to remember the AR-15 the the uber modern tactical du jour rifle of the day right that came that's 1950s technology that was developed in the 50s adopted in the 60s it's not exactly new but you've been so restricted you can't even have that and your your quest to have that is so great that you're going to get a lever action that kind of looks like that if you want to get a lever action, get a good lever action. If you want an AR, get an AR. If you can't get an AR, move and get an AR. Or, right, not everything has to be an AR. You get to the point where you have to neuter an AR so much, like California, Massachusetts, you got to wonder, is it even worth it? Get a gun that's good from jump that you can actually have, like a Mini-14, instead of one of these abominations. When, in a real-world scenario, would you ever choose a lever action AR thing abomination over a mini 14 right not everything has to take glock and ar magazines have it take the magazine it was designed for what is this thing Ugh. It's, it saddens me that it exists um kind of like the 350 legend i just i'm sorry if you live in those places i really am my heart goes out to you but there's probably a better choice I don't know what these things are supposed to be or trying to be. Anyway, <laughs> not that they're like, again, you don't have to agree with me on this episode. This is not a deep philosophical episode where it's right and wrong. If you want any of these guns, I'm not even saying they're not well-made guns. I'm not even saying they don't work. I'm just, I think they're a little bit confused as to what they're supposed to be. What is this thing? There are some really cool mashups that I think really make sense and are really good. Something like the Browning BLR. It's a lever action, but it takes box magazines and it lets you shoot a Spitzer cartridge. And they have a takedown model. To me, that makes a lot of sense. Of all the lever actions, that one probably, practically, is one of the best ones. So it doesn't, I, I'm not a purist. I'm not saying, like, if it's a lever action, it's got to be tube feed and it's got to be walnut stocked. It's got to have a brass receiver. Like, I'm not that dude. But some of these things, you just scratch your head and, and think, why? Just to separate people from their money? Just to get around some laws that don't make sense? Which, I guess I'm all for that. But I just, these guns are a little confusing to me. Anyway, a lighthearted episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I appreciate you listening. Your tactical tip of the day. Build out your core battery of good practical guns first. Even if you're into guns for the fact that they were in some video game somewhere, sometime. 
make sure you get a good core battery. Make sure you have a good usable handgun, a good usable rifle, you know, a good usable shotgun that's an actual shotgun. Build this core battery out first, and then if you've got extra income and you just want to spend it on fun, esoteric, obscure guns, rock on, man. More power to you. But have that core battery. That's my tactical tip of the day, your tactical verse of the day. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field, nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. And you shall not glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the needy and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, so as to profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. With that, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.